Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to talk about the realities of quant finance for those not located in um, financial hubs here. So apologies, my face is redder than red. It is hotter than hot. I forgot to turn on um, my air conditioners. And anyway, it's been a long day. It's in Texas, it's hot. It's in the 90s. Um, on the Discord channel here, so let me just put a disclaimer. The general Discord channel, that that is free, has been a dumpster fire. Uh, it was a dumpster fire the first day. It settled down. It got much better. And then the dumpster fire took off again. Um, we will figure out ways to fix that. That's not the purpose of this video here. Uh, but anyways, bear with me. The channel is designed for quants, meaning quantitative research, quantitative um, things with math and stats. It's not a trading channel. Um, even somebody, you know, mentioned Dimitri, I thought that you talked about trading and stuff. Um, and therefore, like your channel's misleading. Um, I don't talk about trading. I've made videos on why I don't talk about trading. Uh, my channel is for quants, those doing math and stats, things that are quantitative, hence the word quant. Anyways, I digress. Um, but there was a question that came up and there were some people that were being quite, I think, honest and real. It came off maybe a little bit brutal, maybe not worded the most, you know, politically correct. And then there were people that were just kind of fueling um, the sympathy fire, um, the socialistic views, the things that were not helpful, which people think they're being helpful. You're not being helpful. You're costing people time and money, which is horrible because these people don't have the time and money. So let me lay the groundwork here. Somebody asked in the, you know, Dimitri, why don't you make the subscriptions on Discord free? Uh, how do I get into quantitative finance? Um, I don't have any money. I'm from a third world country. And this, I don't know, I'm not going to get into the validity of these comments and the person because I don't know. It's Discord. It's horribly um, anonymous. Uh, but this leads to the question I get actually quite a bit, which is, Dimitri, um, I am a subscriber of your channel. I am in a third world country of some sorts. And you don't even have to be third world. You could be a country without a massive financial hub. So there are many countries around the world that do not have uh, large financial hubs. You are going to have a much, much harder time getting into quantitative finance. And let me la lay the groundwork on why this is and why. And often, in many cases, it's just not possible. Like, you're not going to end up in quantitative finance. And I think it is mean, I think it is rude for people to imply that if you study textbooks, so, you know, I say, oh, go out and buy, I don't know, this structured finance modeling textbook, or go out and buy this time series analysis textbooks by Hamilton. You know, if you just learn all the material and you're really smart, you'll be a quant and make lots of money, you know. Go ahead, buy, buy, buy. Pay me for all these courses and these textbooks. Um, that's what people are doing on, on a lot of these forums, which I think is quite unfortunate. Um, and they're getting your hopes up. So let me explain kind of the US market. Let me explain my views on other markets. And then let me explain why um, things don't work the way people think they work here. So. One, U.S. markets require a graduate degree for quantitative finance, meaning quantitative research, model development, model validation on the sell side. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw out the buy side risk because I found out from talking to many people, buy side risk is not the same rigor as sell side risk. Whole other conversation here. But the issue is, is those doing math and stats wanting to get into quantitative markets in the U.S. require at minimum, the bare minimum requirement is a graduate degree. So it must be a master's or a Ph.D. in something quantitative. OK, we do not hire MBAs. We don't hire business degrees. Uh, now, that being said, I will take a step back. Uh, I have made job offers to those with psychology PhDs or other sorts of PhDs. The reason for that is it's a PhD. They have to take stats, probability, and some math behind the scenes, and they have to do applications, and they have to do um, like experimental design, for example, things you don't take as an undergrad. Anyways, you need the skill sets so of a graduate degree to get you the bare minimum skills where someone is willing to train you from a graduate degree up. Like a PhD, you, you, you've hit maybe 1% of knowledge. You still got 99% to go. And the reality is you'll never complete it. There's not enough time. There's not enough resources. Um, you're going to specialize in something and you're only going to learn a small fraction. But even with a PhD, even with a master's in financial engineering, quantitative finance, you still have a ton of information to learn here. So these are bare minimum requirements. And those degrees must be done in the country that you are working in. Now, I'm going to put the caveat here. Europe is kind of like a country. I know it is not. It is kind of like a country, though. So often you can get a degree in one um, country and you can work perhaps in a few other countries. 
I know, I've seen subscribers do it. Um, it's harder than it looks often, but anyways, US, you need to get a US degree. The US market is predominantly foreign, you know, non-national US citizens. These are gonna be people that are Chinese, Indian, um, all kinds of countries in uh, Europe, Italy, I've seen, uh, UK, um, France, for example. France has a lot of good quants there as well. Um, even in South America, like Brazil, I've seen people from Korea. I've seen people, um, i trying to think some of the other countries here, but you can come from anywhere, but you have to have the money to come to the US to get the graduate degree in the United States here. So answering the question which people ask, which is, Dimitri, I am in a third world country. My family has no money. I want to be a quant and make lots of money. Um, one, you have bad intentions when you say, I want to make lots of money. That's not why you become a quant. And I say that because there are lots of other career paths you could make lots of money in. Now, if you're doing it because it's interesting, you know, that's a much better path. Why? Because you will give up. It is very hard to become a quant. If you're not wanting to do it, you're just doing it for the money, you will not make it. Um, but you have to have the money to get here. You have to have the money to get the degree. It is expensive. Yes, I know. That is why U.S. markets pay more. That is why the U.S. education system is better in many ways. Um, again, we're going to focus in on the United States. America, America, America. We pay great salaries. We have a well-developed market. We have a lot of regulations. This makes quantitative finance work. When you in a country and the laws don't apply the same, so let me go back here to my old financial days. Um, and you look at like Fisher Black, for example, one of the fathers of financial engineering here, quantitative finance, um, there was a big push for standardization of accounting processes and procedures like FASB, for example. Why? Why do quants care about accounting, right? This seems nonsensical because you have to have consistency to do actual math and modeling, right? If every company defines profit differently, um, if everybody defines net profit or net losses differently, and yes, we see this, this is not standardized often. You need some sort of regulation to enforce this so that everybody is reporting financials the same. Everybody is hopefully reporting data as close to the same as possible. You need regulation. This is why US market reigns king is because we have a good set of regulation and we tend to have more capitalism more free markets than other countries. I know, I know, we are very progressive in many ways, like our tax system. Um, there's a big push for socialism and communism in the US. Yes, there are groups that do this. You might not know this. Um, I've ran into them. I've had discussions with them from an economic standpoint. So United States market, again, it's not going to be feasible. If you say, I have no money, I have no way to get to the US, I have no way to pay for school, I have no way to pay the application fee to apply for schools, right? You're, there's not an easy path. And I'll talk about probably the ways you could go about this here at the end a little bit to increase your odds, but they're not really that great. Now, if you look at Europe, again, you have to kind of consider Europe as a conglomerate, one Europe. I know there are still differences and issues between countries. Um, I had a recent interview um, with Alexander, which was on KDB. We were talking about that. He even mentioned, for example, going to a different school in uh, the UK made a difference on getting into quantitative finance. So the schools you go to matter. It makes a big deal. You can't just go to any school under the sun in a country and think you're going to get a job there. Um, that being said as well, I knew somebody else who was from an Eastern European country, had a financial engineering master's, right? It was free or very cheap. Guess what? It was not worth anything. I'm sure they actually learned things and there was some sort of value to it, but companies in London and the UK did not value that. So that individual had to then come to the US because he wanted to work in a high paying quant job in the US. Um, he was a really brilliant guy, um, had a true passion in the field, you know, checks all the boxes. I know many of you have these things, but the issue is he had to come here. He had to pay money to get another degree, taking very similar courses um, and then getting a job from the US here. Again, you have to go through visas and there's all kinds of stipulations and rules and laws and regulations. Um, for example, I can't just go out and just hire someone too internationally and just like send all my work to them and have it done. There's rules, regulations, and laws that all pertain to this. Uh, companies have to hire lawyers to bring in to make sure we're meeting all the laws and compensation issues and a bunch of other things. Not my area of specialty. Again, Europe though, similar situation. You have financial hubs. You want to go to schools that are good schools that are close to the financial hubs like London. Um, Again, there are some other places, for example, in Switzerland, uh, Germany has some jobs, uh, Spain has some jobs as well. Again, there's going to be some jobs here and there. There's companies and people doing things, but you need, again, to go to school in Europe to do that. Um, I highly doubt, someone can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I highly doubt uh, a European country like someone on the, you know, in London 
it's going to say, you know what, let's go hire someone from, put your third world country here, um, maybe like a small island or something, I don't know. Pick somewhere, I don't know, I'm not, I don't want to put my foot in my mouth on this, but pick some sort of country. They're not going to do that. They have a lot of talent and pools they can pick from locally in the UK or in London, and if not, then they will go to the rest of Europe. Um, so that's that. Now, what do you do if you're in a third world country? Let me lay out a few paths and kind of things I have seen. So one, I have seen extreme cases where people and families are very dedicated to pushing um, their children to go into quantitative finance and will make it happen. So it blew my mind. I had a subscriber that emailed me and thanked me. They'd been following me, I don't know, for how many years. It was quite some time. Um, they'd followed my channel. They followed my advice. They went, uh, their family sold basically everything they had for the most part. They scraped by their family, their parents lived essentially on next to nothing because they wanted to sell as much stuff as possible and send their child to Europe where they went to uh, graduate school. They went there, they studied a STEM background. I don't remember which degree. Um, and then they went on to get a job in quantitative finance and make fairly good money. Uh, I'm guessing it was probably in Switzerland because good money typically happens in Switzerland. And then I don't know what happened after that. I don't know if they sent money back, obviously, to help comp the parents or if they tried to bring the parents um, to Europe or wherever they were located. Um, but again, family made absolute huge, massive sacrifices. This is a huge risk. I understand this. And then people in the Discord channel kept putting the word privilege on everything for everybody, which drives me insane. Um, so for those of you that don't know my background and stories, I grew up middle-class America. By the time I went to college, my parents didn't have the funds to put me all the way through college and through graduate school, right? $70,000, 76, $73,000, something like that for my master's degree. Um, again, right? I was on my own at 20. I was married. I paid my way. I had no support. No one was standing behind me saying, hey, you need food. You need textbooks. You need tuition. You're going to pay for it. I've made my way. I've paid my own things. Um, and I also worked while I went to school at the same time. So I was able to make that happen. Um, again, a lot of people aren't going to have this opportunity. So if you are from another country, I get it. You're not going to have the same opportunities. Um, so again, you either need to make a massive sacrifice to do that. That's going to be the best route. It is very, very hard. I know I've seen another individual. Again, they moved um, from their country. There was no quant market there. Okay. So they got the undergrad there, no quant market. Then they ended up moving to Canada, uh, working, found a job, spent a ton of money on different sorts of courses. I believe they paid a bunch of money for Baruch's um, C++ programming quantitative finance course, which I think is very expensive for perhaps the value. It has worked out for them. So they have used that and leveraged that. Then they've gotten into a really good graduate school. So I believe they just went to Canada and worked. Then they got into a really good graduate school here in the US. They're going to school. They're going to do that process. And they still have the risk that they have to find a job and they might not find a job. Right? This is not a risk-free solution. There is no handouts in quant finance. Um, so again, it's a hard road. It's a lot of people, I'm not gonna say a lot of people. Some people do it, they make it. Many people that succeed in the field come from wealthy families in other countries that get sent here. Um, and then they do the US education system, get a job in quant finance and make pretty good money and a good living. Um, and many of them stay long-term because there's just a lot of opportunity here. Now, if you are from a third world country or a country that just doesn't have a financial hub, you could be, I don't know, some first world country that just isn't a big hub for finance. Um, there are a few different options of this. So if you cannot afford to go the route of going to the schools, the best route is to pay for the education, the graduate degree at least, in these other countries, get a great degree, go that path. That's the easiest path, though it's the most expensive, and it's not so easy for those that don't have you know, funds and money for that. Um, World Quant University, I have done a review on in the past. I am not a huge fan of it, um, but you can go watch my review if you want. Just search World Quant Dimitri Bianco. Um, the reason I do not suggest it is it's it's hard to judge the rigor of the program, uh, the the job placement as well. So for those of you that you know bashed me in the comments and were like, oh, how dare you not say it's a real program? Um, I have a lot of World Quant University students who are working at World Quant making peanuts, and then they message me saying, hey, I really need a job. I got this degree in World Quant. I'm sitting somewhere in Europe. Um, can you hire me? And the answer is no. You are not in the U.S. So one, I can't hire you. You're not physically here. And Two, I don't hire people from World Quant. Most quant firms aren't going to hire online degrees here. Um, but that is one path. Now, if you want to stay in your country and they don't have a big quant finance market, this could be an actually an interesting path for you because you could go down the path, get the degree, learn a lot of the information as best as you can. Hopefully you get enough foundations. Hopefully you have a good solid STEM sort of undergrad degree already. And then you can hopefully take that 
in your home country and figure out how to add and build and use the tools you've learned in quant finance in your home country. I think that's actually a really good thing to do. I think uh, many of the people in World Quant had some sort of idea behind that of trying to just, you know, democratize um, and distribute here freely some of the open source approach to quant finance knowledge and help people in those countries. Um, again, as I mentioned, there are hurdles and issues with data quality, procedures, laws, rules, regulations, even on the trading side here. Um, I have a book which don't have it next to me, but I have a book on market microstructure. It talks a little bit about dynamics and difference regulations, even between London and New York. So the U.S. market uh, and the US, U.K. market, um, the regulations make a difference. So again, you're probably not going to be able to apply it directly the same. You're not going to make the same amount of money, most likely, um, but you could apply that in your home country. Now, you could also learn the skills, learn the materials, and try to get to another country. But to be honest with you guys, the odds aren't real great. Uh, it's really hard to move to another country, um, get a visa or whatever you need, especially in the US, um, and take those skills with you and bring them here, especially if you don't have a degree from that school. World Quant is an option. Now there is the CQF, which is another designation that's online. It is more expensive and I didn't realize there is odd pricing depending where you're from. So those in the US pay a much higher price. Um, those that are gonna be in other countries like third world countries, second world countries, uh, maybe even like, I don't know, maybe, I don't know how the pricing works for them, but I've heard uh, people from other countries get different pricing. And so it could be cheaper and a better option. Um, CQF is tied to Paul Wilmot. Paul, Wil Paul Wilmot is a fairly well-known quant. Um, some of the teachers look to be quite interesting and again, perhaps better quality. I don't know how CQF um, it compares to world quant. Um, world quant, again, is a different option, but it's free. So CQF is going to cost you money. This might be another option as well. Again, you can gain these skills. You can try to make something happen, but I'm going to tell you, and I want to be blatantly honest with you guys, it is very, very hard to get a job um, from those those online degrees, because most of us don't take it serious. Um, and then the other piece is going to be trying to convince someone in those countries to hire you when you're not there. Like, we, we just don't hire outside of the country. Uh, I mean, even like, for example, me moving to London, I've had a job offer or two over the years. Uh, it's it's like a supply and demand thing of a very niche skill that they need. And then you have to go through visas and there's a lot of headache and paperwork to it. Even moving from those two countries that have good relations is hard. Uh, again, convincing someone to hire you from an online degree is challenging. So anyways, I just hope you guys take the reality of this, which is, I know it sucks. It's not fair, right? You are born into a different country. Perhaps you don't have a lot of money, um, right? But you need the money. You need the degree to really get into the field and make it happen here. I think it is quite naive. I think it is misleading because imagine you're in one of these countries, you know, you work really hard and then you're like, oh, if I go and get this free degree, I'm going to get a job because I've seen many of you do this and you go and you spend the time and the effort and the money, right? It's still taking you time. You could have been working somewhere else and making actual money, but instead you go to one of these sort of online degrees or some shortcut route and then you finish and you're unemployed and you're emailing me begging for a job and it's like, there's nothing I can do. And then unfortunately the people in, you know, these industries as well, there's not a lot they can do. Um, it's just a tough route to be in. So do your homework. Again, I would recommend to, if you're interested in quant finance, look for people in your country, message them, see what they're talking about, see what they're doing here. Um, they might have some sort of, maybe find a scholarship or a sponsorship or some way to kind of get to a specific school, university degree. Maybe there's a firm in your country that is hiring quants, right? Maybe it's just one of, you know, only like five or 10 firms. Try that route. The other thing I would like to note here as well is many schools offer scholarships. So when you apply to the big name schools in the United States, often many internationals, especially those that aren't that wealthy, you don't have that much money, you will apply. Tuition might be $20,000 a semester or $30,000 a semester, whatever it is. And uh, the school might say, and hey, we're going to knock that down. And that's only going to be, you know, I don't know, $10,000. Maybe it's half. Maybe it's three quarters. I don't know. You know, something like that. So anyways, I thought I'd make this video just to be helpful for you guys. Again, I don't want to be a downer here. I don't want to be mean and nasty and name call people. But the reality is you need top notch degrees from top notch schools in specific countries where you want to work. Um, unfortunately, quant finance is not as common around the world. Again, there are regulatory reasons for that. So anyways, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And as always, until next time.